Welcome back to Out of the Rough. I'm joined by my friend, John Klimshin. They call him Coach K. They do. Welcome to the show. And rightfully so. Yes, author. Two, uh, two books, The Ultimate Sales Manager's Guide. Yes. But the other book, I debuted it, right, on, a, on one of my shows. It's Absolutely. called How to Sell Without Being a Jerk, back, back in 08. 2008, yes. Yeah, 2008. We want to talk about sales excellence because okay. I think it's really important we communicate with salespeople to be very good at their craft and communicate very effectively. Um, and you've built great sales teams. Um, tell me about that environment, how you've been able to do that. Well, to me, it, everything begins with the vision. Vision precedes everything that you do. And you want to build sales excellence and life abundance. It means that you have to start out with a decision about what your vision is. Once you decide what the vision is, what you want to look like, feel like, sound like, what you want the environment of the sales team to be, then it all starts with the language. What is the language that you are using internally, externally? How do you engage people so that you receive invitations to go forward with them? Sales excellence and life abundance is about making very specific choices because to me, the broadest chasm in human experience is the 18 inches between the head and the heart. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of struggles between those two very powerful entities. And sometimes we want to follow the heart, and sometimes we want to follow the head. And if we can create some harmony between those two, and we can create a vision of where we want to be down the road, all of a sudden people want to start getting involved in that. People are caught up in vision. There's an old saying that says, without a vision, the people mm -hmm. perish. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So now, the vision could be by the sales manager, or it could be by yourself. What you want to be as a salesperson. The vision can come from you also. Absolutely. Or how you're going to implement the vision of management. Absolutely. I think that as a manager, you have to have a vision for what the team looks like and feels like. And then as you select members to the team and invite them to the team and build them as part of the team, you now can realize that vision. And one of the things about being a leader is staying two or three steps ahead of where the person is today. In my book, How to Sell Without Being a Jerk, we have these things that we call painful selling truths. Mm -hmm. And sometimes truth is painful. And that's how a lot of us learn. And one of them is if you want new business today, Today is far too late for you to start working on it. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it speaks to what vision is all about. Where do you want your business to be three months from today, six months from today, a year from today? It doesn't mean that you have to have it totally colored in and fixed. It means that a vision is flexible and it is vibrant and it is colorful and it has a lot of energy. And when you articulate a vision through language, which is incredibly powerful, people get excited about it. Right. And enthusiasm, as you know, I mean, every time you and I are in the same room together, the place clears out because we're very enthusiastic people. Enthusiasm is contagious. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it makes people want to connect with it. And it helps them to build that harmony between the head and the heart. And it draws people to you. But salespeople struggle. They what do. do they struggle with? Focus. What's going on over there? Over exactly there, over right. There, right. We call it shiny metal object syndrome, right? Or uh, they call it squirrel. You see squirrel. squirrel? Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yes. I'm totally focused on this and I love doing, oh, look, I can go do that now. Yeah. Uh, when salespeople determine and decide to be focused, then they can exercise one of the key ingredients to long-term success for salespeople. And me, I've been selling for years, and in those years I've learned a couple of things. And one of them is that the people that are focused tend to accomplish a lot more than everybody else who people kowtow to saying they're so talented, they're so uh, charismatic, they're so smart. You know who really succeeds are the people who are focused and get the work done. And to me, sales first and foremost is about discipline. People think that discipline is the enemy to freedom. It's not. It's the key to freedom. Mm -hmm. I've run my own practice for better than 15 years. And I tell you what, that through the ups and the downs, through the uh, what we call the dark nights of the soul, of am I ever going to be able to close another deal, serve another client, do anything that I enjoy again, I know that when I go back to discipline, it's going to serve me. When I started my practice in 1999, I had no college degree, which I still don't. I had no verifiable clients. I have some now. Yeah. I didn't have any reason on earth why my business should launch outside of the fact that I sat down at 7 a.m. every day and I started hammering out phone calls. And I had some bravado and I had a tremendous amount of motivation because I had three other mouths to feed. Besides well, you had a PhD. No. You were poor, hungry, and driven. Well, oh yeah, oh yeah, I've gotten three of those because I've been at it for 30 years. I've never heard that before. That's very good. <laughs> you should come up with those more often. <laughs> well, discipline, I think, is a cornerstone of, of any successful life, in my opinion. Discipline in all aspects of your life, which is critical. I want to jump to something that uh, we only have about a minute and a half on to talk about, and that is 
the 10 tasks for today. That's a, a cornerstone of what you teach. It absolutely is because when I said that, what is, you asked me what do salespeople struggle with, what they struggle with is the ability to focus. And they will make themselves a list of 23 things that they want to do today. Guess what? I don't care if you work 12 hours, you're not going to accomplish 23 things with efficiency and proficiency. So those two words are very powerful for me. As I said, I'm a fanatic for language. So if they can write down 10 things tonight that they're going to accomplish tomorrow, clear all the way through and done, they do that for 21 business days, which is just over two and a half weeks, they are going to see an amazing, clear picture. They're going to be able to realize their vision. What you said, 21 days, which is takes to, to get in a habit, but you said the night before. And I want to emphasize that because all night you're going to be thinking about it. Mm. However, if you write it down, it frees you. It Absolutely. frees you to sleep. Yeah, what, what power do you find in that? I, found tr I find tremendous power in that because, it, as you said, it frees you to sleep and rest is as powerful as work is. It is as necessary as work is, and the older I get, the more I believe that. Mm -hmm. And when I focus on these specific things and I get them done, number one, I get done a little earlier in the day, so now I can be creative. Number two, there's this amazing sense of accomplishment. That's done. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most powerful words in our language. It's done. I don't have to recheck it, rethink it, redo it, and now I'm building a platform for myself to reach higher, go deeper, yeah. and win more. Yeah. Love it. Uh, we're going to jump to a quick break, uh, John. We're going to come back and talk about the business generator and talk about the 20 calls that you think are critical in the success of salespeople. We'll be right back.